Hey guys, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. I'm Chris Cottrell, and this is part two of my presentation on Carolina Bay formation. Uh, if you have no idea what a Carolina Bay is, then you should probably go back and watch part one first uh, before moving on. There's a lot of good information there, and it will definitely be worth your time. Uh, just to quickly recap, we discussed how the Laurentide ice sheet was likely struck by a comet fragment uh, in the area that we now call Saginaw Bay of the Great Lakes region. Um, this primary impact must have sent massive amounts of ice and slush hurling across the continent, creating the secondary impact features that we call the Carolina Bays. Uh, now, before we get going with part two, um, you may want to grab a little pillow or something to catch your jaw because uh, there's, there's going to be some extraordinary images coming up. Uh, and especially if you live anywhere along the East Coast, uh, you are part of this story. Okay, so for part two, I wanted to focus on some, uh, some newer technology that has truly been a game changer for this kind of research. Uh, LIDAR, or light imaging, detection, and ranging, is similar to radar, but instead of using sound waves to determine distance, uh, we're, we're going to use laser pulses um, from sensors mounted on the bottom of airplanes. Uh, <clears throat> the result is a fine-tuned image showing minute changes in ground elevation while removing vegetation cover and anything else that might get in the way of that. Um, as a matter of fact, just last week, at least at the time of this recording, um, a huge Mayan megacity was discovered within the rainforest of Guatemala using LIDAR. So this technology is breaking ground all over the scientific community right now. Um, I also wanted to go ahead and make sure that I gave credit where credit is due here. Uh, Michael Davius has been a pivotal figure when it comes to uh, Carolina Bay research. He's, uh, he's an independent researcher who has, among a list of other things, many other things, um, he's been taking these LiDAR images and overlaying them onto Google Earth. And by doing this, he's made this information easily accessible uh, to the public. And that's, that's you and I. Um, I've been in contact with Michael, and he's been nothing but helpful and supportive. Uh, and I'll be sure to provide a link to his website in the description below. Um, so what I want to do now is take us on a visual trip uh, from South Carolina, or from South Georgia, up through the Carolinas and beyond uh, to show you some comparisons between regular Google Earth and the same exact images using LiDAR overlays. Um, we're going to see these details of the ground elevations uh, that you really can't see with the regular images. So let's go ahead and see if we can identify some Carolina bays. Uh, we're going to start right here. Uh, this is Valdosta, Georgia, and just northeast of Valdosta is Grand Bay. Uh, this is a well-known South Georgia Carolina Bay. Um, and, I, and I highlighted this in part one. There's a video in my Dabbler's Den series uh, that, that helps explain that also. Um, so again, this is a side-by-side -side compar comparison of the same exact area. Here's Grand Bay. Here's Grand Bay. Um, and we could see, you know, other flat elliptical depressions that represent the, the, the Carolina Bays. There's one here. There's one here. Um, there's one way up here. And again, here it is on the regular image. Adel. There's one just west of Adel. Here it is right here. Um, so if anything, LiDAR helps pick up these, uh, these flat spots in the landscape. Um, moving in a general northeast direction, we're going to go from Valdosta to Statesboro or VSU to GSU. Uh, and that's Georgia Southern if, if you know, you're not from around here. Uh, again, side by side, we can really see the difference in terrain uh, with the LiDAR here, especially between like the upper coastal plain and the lower coastal plain. Um, and you'll notice that the terrain is much busier uh, with, with lots of farmland and lots of things to distract you. But, uh, you, you know, as you start to train your eyes with the LiDAR, you see these flat areas um, are the bays, and they start to pop out at you. Uh, you know, and here's, here's a handful of them right here. One, two, three, four. Uh, there's one right here. Um, so the LiDAR is really going to help pick those up. Uh, just to make things uh, just a little bigger, um, and moving again uh, a little farther northeast is the town of Slovenia right here. Uh, and you'll see this is the Savannah River. This is the border between Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, and right away, we can start to pick out some of the Carolina Bays. I see a handful right here. There's one or two over here. Um, but don't get confused with these circular farms. Uh, these circular farms over here, this is an irrigation method. Uh, it really has nothing to do with the Carolina Bays. Um, and, and again, that's one of, the, one of the benefits of the LiDAR is we're not going to see any of that when we click over to LiDAR. So let's go ahead and click over to LiDAR and see if we can see some more Carolina Bays. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, this entire area is covered in Carolina Bays. They're everywhere. They overlay each other. Uh, I mean, if we look over here, there's a handful. I mean, this whole area is just completely, you know, pockmarked with, with these Carolina Bays, this entire area. Um, you know, 
this is insane. This is this wasn't some wind and w water erosion uh, over a long period of time. This was a major, major event, uh, and it was a very, very bad day for anything living in North America and really the world. Um, in future videos, I'll get into the great North American extinction event that uh, we're just now learning about, uh, and this included people. So, so this is going to be really important later. Um, <clears throat> this was this was just a bad, bad day. Moving northeast into South Carolina. Uh, we can see here the town of Bamberg, which I just thought was fitting. Uh, but again, if you start to train your eyes, you start to see these elliptical shapes. Uh, here's one here. There's a couple more over here. Um, uh, but, you know, once we once we click over to the LiDAR, you know, that's, <laughs> I mean, are you kidding? I mean, look at this. The entire area is completely covered in Carolina Bays. I mean, there's not one square inch that wasn't affected by humongous chunks of ice being flung from, flung from the Great Lakes region into the ground here at the coastal plain uh, of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and beyond, all the way up into like Long Island, New York, um, which is where the last glacial glaciation stopped. Um, this entire area was reshaped in a matter of moments. Uh, and in my next video, I'll get into the amount of energy that must have been involved here for these images to be explained. I mean, we're talking about megatons of energy, atomic bombs worth of energy dropping onto every square inch of this part of North America. Uh, we'll see. We'll see them. We see them well in the coastal plain, mainly because of liquid liquefaction uh, of the unconsolidated sediments, which is the sand and mud of the coastal plains. Um, and again, this must have occurred when these these I mean, just stadium sized chunks of ice uh, and slush started to bombard the area. Um, this would have been a very, very, very bad day. Uh, moving again to the northeast, uh, we can we can kind of start seeing a few more pronounced bay features. Uh, there's a handful over here, um, and and. You know, again, they're all the same shape. They all point to the same direction, but they're different sizes. Uh, but again, if we click over to LIDAR, <laughs> I mean, it's mind boggling the amount of devastation that this would have that this would have been. Um, again, if we if we click back real fast. Uh, yeah, if we click back real fast, you know, you can see this is where people live. This is, you know, this is towns and farms and highways and people live here. They, you know, but this wouldn't have been the case uh, after an event like this. This, this would have been completely flattened at one time. Um, okay, going farther northeast, uh, we can see Laurenburg, Red Springs, Rayford. Uh, you can really start to see some more Carolina Bay features here. Uh, but once we click over to that LIDAR, you can hear some more here. But as we click over to, there's no question that this would have been a bad day in North America. And, and all of these bays were created at the same time. They had to have been. I mean, if you look at how they're overlaid, if you look at just the sheer number of them, um, you know, it's, it's also interesting that we can use these images to help develop a timeline. Uh, because obviously we know for sure that these bays occurred before all of these river drainage basins. Um, there's no there's no bay features in the river drainage basins, and I and I'm going to get more uh, more on this later on in another video, because uh, I believe that these these rivers were probably created as part uh, you know created as all of this ice that did fall um, started to melt and and had to go somewhere. Um, so I th I think that will probably these these probably occurred very quickly or close to the same same time frame. Um, and there are other clues out there that we'll get into later on. Okay, last set of images. Uh, you know, this right here is the uh, Cape Fear River Valley. Uh, th these were the first Carolina bays that were discovered, you know, after, after man flight. Um, very easy to see here. Um, and, but again, if we click over, it's just no question. They're, it, they're everywhere. Um, this entire area was completely pockmarked uh, with Carolina bays. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Uh, I hope that seeing it with your own eyes will bring up those questions that really need to be asked and uh, help solidify what caused these Carolina Bays. Uh, it's really about connecting the dots to our recent geologic past. Uh, the story uh, the story is there. We just need to start reading it. Uh, part three is going to focus on the work of Antonio Zamora and uh, the disastrous effects immediately following the primary impact that would have created these Carolina Bays. So, so thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.